Hi there, Jerry Shields here, and uh, today's lesson is going to be about how to route your golf course, where to put on the holes and some of the features. And we're going to build this on top of last time we built this property here. And and since the uh, first video, I did do a few modifications. I'll go in and show you that now. Uh, you can see that the river I've cleaned up a little bit, I've widened it, I've spread out some of the terrain around the river, I've got some wider sections and I've got some tributaries that now run off up farther up into the hills. I've also got another wider section here and, uh, and again the river splits and, and breaks off up into a higher elevation and it does the same thing uh, and goes uh, kind of into this dry gulch as we get to the back of the course and we may still fix that, it depends on where our holes are going to end up. But today I want to talk about rooting, and and before I root the course, I often consider the property from a owner's perspective, an architect perspective, and I know this is just a uh, video game at this point, or a simulation for some, but consideration needs to be given to where a clubhouse facility would be, a maintenance facility, road access, and so forth. And So I had this property, I had this river, the mouth of the river, and this little, uh, you know, island idea that I might have something off here uh, that we can put a hole or a green onto and and I was trying to figure out where I would have my clubhouse what would access and I thought about the back of the property but then you're kind of in the middle of nowhere back there road access would have to come off from somewhere in the distance and I started thinking about the side of the property I thought about having it over here and and I figured with that island in play and we're likely going to modify it a bit still but likely going to have a hole over there somewhere so I decided on this half of the golf course being my entry. So what I did is I, I can't build beyond that line that you can see there. That's the edge of the uh, terrain that we can modify. So I built a road coming on to the edge of the property and it winds down along uh, the shore here. I thought this would be a nice little drive in. And we get through and I've even got a car in place. And then I even built some a gated area. So this is where someone would come up and they'd have to uh, confirm they got a tee time and be allowed into our exclusive golf course. And that's just uh, using, I used a, a couple shelters in the buildings, a couple brick walls and, and a couple lights as well. And just thought I'd kind of um, put something special in there. And when I do things like this, the idea isn't that this will ever be seen by anybody playing the course. It's to get me into that mindset, into that creative zone where I'm trying to create a golf course, something that's real. It's not just going to be a video game full of holes. So you come down past the gates and I built a, a little parking lot here and then we go past the parking lot we get into the clubhouse and the clubhouse I built using several different types of buildings and features. I've got a, a lighthouse in there. Let's look at it from the water's edge here and I also um, built these cliffs right up beside the clubhouse. A clubhouse is usually built on a piece of land that kind of overlooks the golf course and or is close to a road in this case and or near some really um, fantastic uh, vista that might not be the course itself. In this case, it is the water that this, this clubhouse is overlooking that big bay and, and we're going to probably have a hole coming up and finishing up this golf course or at the clubhouse. And I did use uh, the green clubhouse that you can find in the defaults. I added on a couple little extra features here on the side. Uh, like I said, added the lighthouse there. So I, I did kind of spark it up a little bit and uh, also added the little turnaround area and that little uh, um, covered uh, brand area where the cars can drop people off with their clubs. So so that was the thinking. Uh, I had a, a driveway, a parking lot, and a clubhouse. And then I thought, well, I want a driving range somewhere near the clubhouse. And so I looked up the hill here and I thought, oh, I'm going to clear some trees out and level out an area. And I, I built a driving range there that is just above the parking lot. And that's kind of nice because we're going to probably put in a path or two that comes from the parking lot to the clubhouse and then back up again to the driving range. And here I'm starting to think about, okay, what am I going to do next? I've got the range. I'm going to need some kind of a little pro shop or starters booth and also a putting green. I'm thinking that's going to be somewhere between the clubhouse and the driving range. And I want to have a finishing hole here, which will be 18th hole. And I'm thinking it's going to come up and it's going to play right up into somewhere just in front of this clubhouse. So that's the finishing hole. So if that's the finishing green, our shot is going to be across the water and coming into that green. So whether we're going to have a par 4, par 5, even a par 3, but you're going to be kind of coming around the water there with a risk-reward shot coming into this clubhouse. 
I don't have a lot of land around the clubhouse. I often like to have my front and back nine return to the clubhouse. I don't think I have the space this time in, in what I've built already. So I'm thinking I'm going to build a, uh, a halfway house. And my thinking is that the halfway house will be somewhere farther up this river towards the back of the property. So we're going to have nine holes that are going to come from the clubhouse, likely work along um, this right side of the main river will be the first nine. And then the back nine will turn around from the, the high end of the property here. And what a beautiful view looking back down there. Um, we're going to have holes that come back down somewhere over to here. And maybe from a couple holes, we'll be able to glance across and, and get a, a peek at the the clubhouse. Uh, still pretty far away, but uh, certainly the finishing holes as we come down here are going to be coming up and uh, looking somewhere over across the water and back to that clubhouse. I also built this little uh, peninsula here with my thinking is if I've got a clubhouse that's on the water like this, I'm likely going to put a little tiny marine in there for people to bring their boats. If they don't want to come by car, they can come by boat and I'll, I'll at some point build those features in it well. Again, a lot of this, nothing to do with the golf, but a lot to do with that mindset, the feel. It kind of really gets you in the design frame of mind. So I'm looking at 18 holes here. And um, just the way I do it is uh, I like a nice mix of par 3, par 4, par 5. And, and I'm just, my personal preference is a par 72. Uh, you can have a par 68, a 74, whatever you think is best. Uh, depending on the property you've got. But for now, I don't really know the property I've got. I haven't zoomed into these close-in areas and, and tried to figure out where does a green look good here. There's a lot of trees in the way. There's a lot of hills to manipulate. And for now, I just want to get an idea where on this property are 18 holes going to fit. And that's what we're going to do today. But once I know where I can put my 18 holes, then I'm going to start going hole by hole and start figuring out, okay, this one could be shorter in a part three and uh, this one could be longer so what i will do is i'm going to use this measuring tool so i i'm thinking that you know the average hole when you average all the holes together would be around 400 yards and i, and I get that number because that would give you 3600 yards on the front nine 3600 on the back that would give you a 7200 yard course so what i'm going to do is i'm going to find just to get a feel for how the course fits on the property i'm just going to do a real rough estimate of where 18 holes fit that are all 400 yards now you're saying jerry i'm not going to design a hole with 18 par fours you could that's it's totally up to you i wouldn't i'm going to go back and i'm going to change some of those 400 yarders to stretch them out a little bit depending on the train and create a five or 600 yard hole for par five and i'm going to take some and, and squeeze them up and make them 150 200 yard par three depending on the train but for now i just want to get a rooting idea of where the holes are going to and where they're coming back from and what I can do with this property before I get into the details of looking right at the landscape, right at the features and figuring out where the holes will go. And I think that's a good approach when you're starting right from scratch. So I already said that I have my finishing hole landing somewhere in in front of this clubhouse. So right off the bat, I'm looking for roughly 400 yards. And this is a par five, then it may end up being, you know, 500 yards from back over here. Um, it's likely not going to take off from the island. That's 800 yards, but we could always still build an island. But... Uh, like I said, all I'm doing is looking for chunks of land that are 400 yards just to get an idea of my rooting. So somewhere over here, I've got 400 yards that looks like, you know, my finishing hole is going to be somewhere in around there. So I know that that's my finishing hole. Uh, it might be longer, it might be shorter. It might come from across the bay and be a par 3. It could be, like I said, a par 5 from this peninsula over here. It depends on, on how... I decide to go with it. Now I said before, I'm going to probably have a putting green that's going to be somewhere up in this area here. And that leaves me with somewhere for probably a pro shop, um, somewhere out just past the clubhouse here. We'll likely get something in place that'll be a, a, a starter's booth or a pro shop of some sort out there. And so that means that we really have between the driving range tees and the water here somewhere to lend, send out a uh, a hole and this will likely be my first hole now i likely would like to have something uphill playing downhill and for now i'm not sure we don't want to play something down by the water it, it could be kind of come into play for that par five especially if we decide to bring the finishing hole fairway around this we want to stay away from the water because that's dedicated to our finishing hole so i'm going to just look up here and say okay there is a good spot for my starting hole and I'm going down here. Like I said, I can't go into the water area because I know that I'm finishing that way. But 
but instead I'm just going to send this out roughly 400 yards and I can look around and see what I've got here um, for property I think that you know there's a nice little goalie in there let's, let's play 400 yards right into there it goes down 26 feet and there's my first 400 yard hole now I can decide what do I want to do next here do I want to bring that hole back towards the water do I want to take it over the hill that'd be a, a heck of a hole going over that little bit of a hill there or do I want to play it up and around this ravine and I think that's probably my best play and uh, I'm not sure at this point how this hole will shape up but I already can see a kind of a really nice hole running through that little ravine there and let's let's tee it up somewhere around in here as I said we're just looking for 400 yards we're gonna we're gonna manipulate this when we get farther into the game I'm just looking for a chance to build 18 holes at this point so here is my well, let's call that my second hole and I know it's not going to be a straight line it'll more than likely play up and around here and come down into a green in this area but for now I'm just trying to make sure that where I think I can fit 18 holes using the features that I can see is going to work then I'll come back then I'm going to start hunting out green sites I'm going to start hunting out uh, other details I know you're going to have a lot of people on other tutorials tell you that the secret is to design your holes and play them into the sun um, it accents the the terrain and it gives a more fantastic view um, I don't believe in that I, I personally like to design a course that is at high noon and uh, and let the features of the course speak for themselves and not have lighting and artistic effects be the, the main driving force for how nice a course looks that's just me but I think that if your course looks good in the middle of the day it'll look good under any lighting and don't be too concerned whether you're playing into the sun away from the sun I know if I'm a golfer and I'm playing the 18th hole I don't want to really play into the sun that's a real pain to see where I'm shooting and I'm losing the ball in the sun and in real life you probably wouldn't do that but uh, in the design world that seems to be artistic for some folks not me I'm here to design a golf course and a playable golf course at that that looks good at all times of day I've walked around Augusta National Golf Course at lunchtime and it is just as stunning as it is at sunrise or sunset so sun angle is not be all to end all in designing golf courses on the 2k21 designer so anyways two holes getting ahead of myself I likely see a hole coming back down out of this ravine now we've got this river it might be kind of interesting to, to send it down you know Alistair McKenzie always said that one one feature is that you should be able to walk from hole to hole rather easily finish up at a green walk to the tee play the hole and then go to the next tee so keeping that in mind if our greens gonna be here let's uh, you know let's put us on this side of the little dry gulch for now and send us down 400 yards and see where that takes us so as you can see we got a really interesting looking hole here we have got this little bit of a river in play uh, this may dog leg around the river we may skip across the river and then give an option to come back in we may put the fairway on both sides if we really want to give some really interesting strategy again roughly I'm looking for 400 yards so close enough as long as you're in the ballpark that could be now my second hole I've got one two three holes already keep in mind that I want to have my ninth hole and somewhere up in the top end of the property here so one two three now where do I send this one so I'm already seeing a bit of a problem here if I build six more holes in this part of the golf course it's going to be a real challenge I'm going to try it because I think we've got some interesting features that we can work with here so let's go in here and we're going to build another hole and let's build this one uh, where does 400 yards take me oh that's really interesting it takes me across that little peninsula again the river is in play uh, do I want to go with the same feel of a hole where I'm fighting the river or do I want to go away from the river? I, I'm going to play away from the river and I'm going to play up into this little bit of a, a gulch here and somewhere up in there we've got about 400 yards so let's throw another hole up in there that's our fourth hole I am seeing some really interesting highland features here I, I really want to send the golfer up into this little valley here so let's set them up there 400 yards somewhere up into here is going to be a real interesting hole and there's my next hole so I'm in one two three four 
one, two, three, four, five holes now. I need four more holes to end me up somewhere on the top of this. So, when I see that, it makes me think that something that plays, oh, look at the, the mounding, it's beautiful here. Um, I'm going to take off something from up here, and where am I going to get us with 400 yards? Somewhere right down in that gully there. So there would be number six, for example. Number seven, let's walk right of that green. We're going to get back up onto another hill and go 400 yards somewhere down in here. Yes, this is this is really interesting here, bringing that river back into play. So you can see now that we are, we got our first hole from the clubhouse, second through the gully, third down the river, fourth back up into a gulch, fifth up and around this high valley, six, seven. I need two more holes to end me up back here. So in other words, I probably have to pull one up in here and then bring one back down. Seems easy enough. So I'm back up over here to this green. We're going to play across this river one more time. Let's see where 400 yards takes us up here. So right up into this high area here, we've got another hole. So let's take us, and like I said, these aren't all going to be 400 yard holes. Some of these may be par threes. I may extend some of these. For now, I'm just trying to get an idea of where I want this golf course. And this will probably look drastically different once we get to the actual layout. But I've now got eight holes in place. And now for my ninth hole, like I said, I want to, I, I see this hill here. I really want to tee off somewhere up here, which means I'm going to want a green there. And if I'm going to want a green somewhere down in here, just across from that river, this looks like a really interesting green zone. There. And like, where does 400 yards bring us? Really nice. Right from that tee back. There we are, our ninth hole. Then we're playing a, a fantastic shot here. What is that? That's down 160 feet with a river right within driving range. That'll be a fascinating number nine. So, I now have nine holes plotted out coming from the clubhouse. And there's a little bit of back and forth, but some are playing across the river, some are playing up into a couple little valleys, so we do have some variety there. And like I said, some of these are going to be par fives, some are going to be par fours, and that's going to kind of mess with our distances, but we're going to solve those problems once we get there. For now, we just want to have the geography working in our favor and uh, going step by step. So, we are now playing back down. So if we've got a green here, we're not going to play from the back side of this mountain. That's just a little crazy. Probably going to go back up over here. And where does 400 yards take us? Well, how about that? It takes us real close to that river. I can see this possibly be extended to a par 5 that plays across down into this area. Or it may just play as a par 4, maybe even a reachable 4 if I wanted to. But uh, I think we've got a nice little spot for a green site right up in here somewhere. So I'm just going to give our 400 yards right there for now. So there's our 10th hole. We're now looking at building seven more holes to get us back to that 18th hole. I really like this site in here. This looks really interesting to me. Um, I'm going to want to come back to there eventually. So let's put a tee down in here somewhere. There's some higher land here just beside that green. And what would be interesting out here? 400 yards. Be playing up 100 feet. Oh, we've got a, a really interesting little valley there play up and there's kind of that dry gulch we might turn that into a river let's let's send this up in there green site could be there could even be up in there if I want to make a really long R5 it is uphill for now we're like I said we're just looking for 400 yard gaps there we go so that would be our 11th hole our 12th hole now I suspect we are gonna have a chance to to really do something interesting here do we play all the way up and over, go look up, up on that ridge? That would be absolutely amazing. I really like that. And then we're going to come back down somehow into here and then get back out to 18. So, so I've got 10 and 11 built. I know where 18 is, but I want to bring the river into play. I want to bring this island. So I'm going to start working this backwards a little bit. 
And so if that is my 18th tee somewhere in there, assuming it doesn't end up back here somewhere, means we're going to have a green somewhere out in, in this neck of the woods. So I'm going to go back, and of course the water is going to be into play, and we're going to build another little 400-yard hole back into here. That would be 17. Uh, maybe we're going to have, you know, might have something teeing off out here when we make this island a little bit bigger. That would be 16. 15 might be to the island and playing all the way down from this big hill here. Um, yeah, there's a 100-yard drop onto an island uh, from right beside the water edge. So there's a hole there, somewhere in there. So real quickly now, we've got 18, 17, 16, 15. We need 14, 13, 12. So we need three holes to get from there back to there. So in other words, I have some choices to make. Uh, three holes to get to there. I would have to put a green site in here. And 400 yards would bring me somewhere into the top of this ridge here. Unless I wanted to play it down here a little more, but I kind of like the ridge. I like that idea of going up the hill somewhat. So 18, 17, 16, 15, 14. Thirteen, twelve. So we need two more holes, and we are over here right now. So to get me two holes, I really like going up this mountain. I'm not sure if it's going to work, but I'm going to put it in here. So I may change this, but I'm going to go 400 yards right up that hill. That's up 200 yards, or sorry, up 200 feet. And people may think this is crazy, but. I really see a hole up here on top of this hill. That would give me number 12, and that one that would give me number 13, playing back down to somewhere in here. Right, you have to decide to either put it down in here or tuck it up here. I kind of like the vista of the water in the background, so I'm likely going to tuck it somewhere. And like I said, this could change drastically. So now. We actually have an 18 old golf course laid out. Now, like I said, these are in theory four par fours, 18 par fours of 400 yards gives us 7,200 yards right now. There's a lot of room to work with. If I want to change this first green side over to the left or make it longer as a par five, I can. I can shorten up this one and make it a par three. You know, there's a lot of work. These river holes, uh, since I don't have any holes right now across the river, a good chance I would probably extend one of these into a par five and put it over on the other side of the river and then uh, and then or sorry probably this one this is the green site but at this point I have 18 holes first second third fourth fifth six seven eight nine we're gonna have a halfway house somewhere up in here for someone to grab a snack and a beer and the tenth hole eleventh twelve all the way up to this mountain uh, thirteen coming down from the mountain 14 shooting towards uh, kind of the water. We'll see where I end up with that one. I may end up bringing that one green site back over to here. We got a, a did I miscount that? I've got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 out to this island, 16 from the island back, 17 across the river, and 18 is going to play up in. And, and there's a good chance 18 made up as a par 5 teeing off from way back over here giving a nice risk reward, which means the green would end up over here, and this hole may turn into a par four that plays across the mouth of the river. So we have some options there. And of course, we've got the island hole to mess with as well. Uh, that's an interesting shot. If that's the tee, we are, we're looking at a 250 yard carry to get to the fairway. So we'll see, we'll mess with it. The island may have to come out a little bit farther. Uh, but uh, that's basically, in a nutshell, how I start to take it from being just a property to possibly a golf course. And I've got options. I've got some spare land in here. I've got some spare land in here that I could wiggle some holes back and forth. And that will be the next video where I now take these actual holes and I start to figure out exactly where I think I want to put them and figuring out whether they want to be par threes, par fours, and par fives. But uh, like I said, that'll be uh, the next run through I have. And I hope right now you've learned uh, 
a little bit about, uh, first of all, getting some motivation, build these little special features like these clubhouses and putting greens and driving ranges. From that, figure out in a real world, where would your holes start, where would you want it to end, and how do you want it to kind of navigate through the landscape in some sort of a coherent fashion. And, and that's about as far as we're going right now. Like I said, this process is long, the process is detailed. And uh, going through all these different pieces there, are, at the end, are going to pay off for you and have a, a well-balanced golf course that really makes use of a lot of your land. And as I look at it, this area here looks like it needs a hole or something, but we'll get there. Once we start actually rooting this into specific holes with certain pars, then uh, these things will start to come alive uh, in the next video. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, then subscribe and you'll see the next time that uh, I have a video. Uh, posted and uh, definitely give a like if you have the, like the video. I'm um, usually checking comments all the time in, in case you have uh, questions or, or want to know anything for any future videos, I'll, I'll be sure to include it. So take care. Again, Jerry Shields here um, and I will let you go till next time. Bye for now.